What up, people? Metaphor Refantagio is coming out this week, and I'm really excited about it. After playing some of the demo, it really confirmed and sold me on what this game has to offer. By the way, if you haven't tried the demo, please do. I'm only like six hours in, and I think I still have like two dungeons left to explore. But anyway, maybe you don't know much about the game or why you should care about it. Well, don't you worry, I'm here to help with that. Also, real quick, for all the people new to the channel, I make videos on single player games, and I mostly focus on RPGs. If that type of content interests you, and you end up enjoying this video, consider subscribing or just hitting the like button to help spread this video around. And with all that out of the way, here are the top five reasons you should be excited for Metaphor Refantasio. The first thing I want to talk about is the tone of the overall game. From the violent opening cutscene, Metaphor Refantasio lets you know exactly what type of game this is going to be. If you play Shin Megami Tensei, you would probably be used to the dark topics covered, but if you're coming from, say, Persona, then you might be a little surprised at the themes this game tackles. Murder, prejudice, and classism are all topics covered throughout this game, and it's extremely refreshing, to say the least. Also, speaking of Persona, I love the fact that we're not dealing with high schoolers. Don't get me wrong, Persona 5 is one of my all-time favorites, but I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little tired of the school aesthetic. Even SMT5 with its dark themes is still based off high school students, just not to the degree of the Persona games. While JRPGs tackling serious, more mature topics isn't anything new, it's something I hope becomes more of a trend as opposed to an outlier. Next, let's talk about the thing you probably care the most about, and that's the combat. Like most Atlas games, Metaphor utilizes turn-based combat or squad battles to defeat enemies. However, the game also incorporates real-time action as well. Before an enemy sees you, you can start attacking using the melee button in order to weaken and possibly stun the opponent. While attacking, if at any point you want to start the actual fight, you can hit the squad button and the turn-based battle combat will begin. Something I really like about this hybrid combat is that if you are much stronger than enemies, you can kill them with one or two melee attacks without having to switch to turn base. This makes going through dungeons a lot less dreadful and is a very useful mechanic that more RPGs really need to utilize. While in turn base mode, early on you have a basic melee and magic attack, but later on in the game introduces what's known as archetypes, which I'll go into much more detail in the next session, but for right now, I'll just be talking about the combat as a whole. Formations are a mechanic that dictates where your party members are during a fight. They can either be in the front or back row, and where they are determines a lot. If someone in your party is in the front row, their melee attacks do more, but so do the enemies that are attacking them. And on the flip side, if you're in the back row, your defense goes up, but your melee attacks are much weaker. I don't believe magic attacks are affected by this, so it would probably be wise to have your mages and healers in the back. If you don't want to have to keep manually doing this during every fight, luckily you can set that up in the menu screen at any time. Once defeating an enemy, you'll receive money, EXP, and mag, which is a currency related to archetypes, which again, I'll get to later. If you get through a fight without being touched, you get a bonus added to all of those, so the game really wants you to strategize to completely overwhelm your opponent. Also, after every level up, you get an automatic point added to one of five categories, which are strength, magic, endurance, agility, and luck. After that, you get a point to add to your category of choice. Even though the combat isn't doing anything we haven't seen before, there's enough there that makes it a very enjoyable experience, while also not feeling repetitive, at least not yet. Next is arguably the biggest part of the combat, and that's archetypes. Archetypes are when your party members become spiritual embodiments of heroes and kings of old. Different archetypes specialize in different things such as magic, healing, and melee attacks. Once one of your party members studies an archetype, any of the other party members can use it as well, so feel free to play around with different combinations. Seeing as how different enemies and dungeons are going to have different weaknesses to exploit, it's going to be important that you pick different archetypes that cover up your other allies' weaknesses for better synergy. As your party members level up during fights, their current archetype will level up as well, which will lead them to learning new and much stronger abilities. You can also inherit skills from other archetypes and add it to your current one, but that and also studying archetypes are going to cost mag, which is the other currency I briefly mentioned in the combat sections. I'm not sure how many archetypes are in the game, but you'll find more of them by finding followers, which are people around town who support your cause. Strengthening your bonds with these people is what unlocks new archetypes, and by interacting with those who support your claim to the throne, you'll unlock sub-stories, which allow you a glimpse into their backstory. Each follower has their own story to tell and pass to discover in the game, and how you choose to navigate your journey will play a huge impact on the growth of your party and the overall story. Archetypes come with their own set of stats that are combined with the party member stats, and the sum of those two sets are what's used during battle. But be careful because some combinations of stats can make certain categories such as strength or magic go down, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but just make sure you pay attention to it. While archetypes aren't personally as interesting to me as say recruiting demons or personas, how you obtain them is kind of cool and I like how it ties into the overall narrative of the game. Moving to the rear.
this next one will be quick, but I felt like I had to talk about the music that I've heard in the game so far. The music in Metaphor is nothing short of phenomenal. It's kind of hard to describe why I like it so much, but every song I hear sounds like I'm at an epic opera or symphony. Whether it's during battle, exploring dungeons, during a cutscene, or just the music playing during a basic conversation, every song has stood out to me and I haven't heard a song I've disliked yet. Again, I'm only 6 hours into the demo, so I'm sure there are more songs to hear further along in the game, and if the quality is up there with what I've heard so far, the vinyl pre-order can't come soon enough. This place here. Hmm. Let's go. Last thing I want to talk about is the first thing that caught my eye with this game, and that's the visuals. And to be clear, I'm not referring to graphics in any way. The thing I like most about this game from a visual standpoint is that almost every part of the game has its own flair to it. The way the text goes across screen when going into a new area, the character portraits during dialogue looks reminiscent of oil paintings, the flashy visuals that appear after you attack an enemy, or just a little gradient circle around the auto text button that's oddly satisfying to me. So much time and detail went into many parts of the metaphor that other games would have simply just phoned in. And add on to that the epic soundtrack playing in the background that I just mentioned makes this a very immersive and visually stimulating experience. Now, the menu screen is the biggest standout to me and many others. I've been playing video games for a long time and I've never thought one of my favorite parts of a game would be the menu, and yet, here we are. The second you open it up, you're greeted with a very vibrant menu that also looks like an oil painting, which I don't think is a coincidence. Going into the party section will show your whole party all facing the same direction like your soldiers, which is cool. When you're hovering over something to select it, there's this beautiful paint stroke that keeps moving and will have a different color depending on which section of the menu you're in. As someone who plays a lot of RPGs, I know how much time I'll be spending in the menu, and for them to arguably make it one of the biggest draws of the game is nothing short of impressive. If you've played Persona 5 or Persona 5 Royal, this type of style and charm isn't anything new to you. That was probably the first game I remember that really flexed its muscles when it comes to showcasing visuals. Persona 5 walked so this game could run, and while I'm not ready to say this game is more stylish than P5, what I am ready to say is that I can't wait for Metaphor Refantagio to finally be released on October 11th. Now I'm really interested to hear what you guys have to say. Are you excited for Metaphor Refantagio? Did you play the demo? Did it make you want or not want the game? Is this your first Atlas game? Let me know in the comments. If you want more RPG content from me, click one of the links on the screen. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe to keep up with the channel. Later.